everybody. My name's Kathy Disbro of Wooly Doodles. So I want to welcome you to my very first uh, video that I am calling an unplugged series. Um, I was on a walk the other day and I saw a really, really nice photo of an echinacea flower. Uh, this photo here. And I thought, why not um, teach and help people who are trying to needle felt paint a photo from a photo and are not really sure what to do. Um, so what I decided to do is I took the photo and I brought it into Photoshop and I manipulated a little bit and I have come up with, uh, I did a black and white version and a color version. Um, I have an inkjet printer uh, so this is not true to the colors, it just is a guide for me as I'm working along. And so what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to talk a bit about um, how I transfer that photo onto a felt sheet. Um, what colors do I bring out to start, um, you know, I have a variety of colors, but how do I do that, um, you know, when I get started? and you know just anything else that I can think of. Um, I did not make this flower yet, like this is the first time I'm going to be doing it. So I thought it would be great to take you along with me to show you like what I do as, as someone who's been felting for a long time, you know what is my thought process as I start working on a painting. Um, so why don't I go ahead and start showing you how I do that. Okay, so I had shown you the original photo, and I will show it again when I talk about colors. Um, and I had said I brought this into Photoshop, and I did create a black and white version and a, and a color version. Um, I know a lot of you probably don't have access to Photoshop. Uh, you probably have access to um, maybe some online tool or an app on your phone. Uh, but honestly, with the original picture, all I did was I just upped the contrast a bit so I can see the outline better because, you know, sometimes this could get a little bit muddled in a photograph, uh, all the greens kind of blending together. Uh, but honestly, you could just print off a photo. Um, I used an inkjet printer. That's why I was saying the quality's not as, not as good as far as the color quality, right? These aren't the true colors. Um, they're not quite so bright. Um, in the photo and I did enhance the photo a little bit as well. Uh, so if you want to um, know more about transferring your photo, um, and I do talk about different ways of transferring a photo, which means how I drew it onto here. Uh, you could go to, you know, in YouTube, I have a video that's called Neil Felting 101, the, um, the basics of needle felt painting. Um, and in that video, I go into a few different ways that you can transfer um, your your photos or your Im imagery. Um, in this case, I'm this is the one where I talked about outlining the image, um, and then you hold it up against a window. Um, and when you use a an off white, like a natural white, um, it's a bit see through. So when you hold it up to a window. Um, you can see through the paper as well. This is inkjet. Um, the paper is just a standard paper you get at the store, and this paper tends to be see-through. So I wouldn't be using cardstock um, to print on um, because then you can't can't see see through it. Now the other techniques I talked about are punching a hole. So you lay your picture and punch a hole, and then draw like. The, connect the dots basically. Um, but what I'm going to show you is that in this case, for me, it was easiest to just take the photo, take a Sharpie. And this is, this is a, it's, it's, it's a bit of a thicker Sharpie. There's really thin Sharpies, but what I find is when you hold your felt sheet up against it, if it's too thin, you can't see it through, right? Even when you hold up to a window or on a light table. So, I like the sharp, the thicker one, and when you felt paint, you know, we'll go over this. Um, when you felt paint, 
you're going to basically be um, creating your own petals and things, right? So um, if this isn't perfect, it's, you know, not the end of the world, right? Because you're going to be creating your very own petals on here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Oh, yeah, I guess we'll just draw the outline of this and then there and then make sure you get your your stem you could you could use a ruler you could freeform honestly I'm going to show you a technique that I do that it, it doesn't really matter how perfect this is because then you have to transfer it anyway on but you got to get it onto your felt sheet so watch the other video and that'll tell you how I was able to get it onto this um, onto my felt sheet but that's basically what what I did is just get the basic outline of that I'm not worrying about all the flowers in the background um, if you were going to do that you could draw that on as well uh, I tend to I tend to like to um, um, with my my paintings and stuff um, I like having my flowers with just a plain background. You could add a background to it. Um, I'm just really, this video, I'm just really going over how I get started on, on my new one. Now I hear I have this, this image that I drew off of my picture, and I actually find it a little boring. So I'm just going to add another petal here and, and another, another petal here right. and I could even add another little one back here just just to give it a little more interest I found that what I drew uh, if you look at an echinacea flower it starts off like a regular you know what you'd see like a daisy and then it starts to droop down so the the older it gets the more droopy it gets but I I just wanted to give it a little more interest and I could always do this as I'm adding it on. Also, there's no petal, or sorry, no leaves. So I could always just throw a leaf in here. Um, I could have done this in, in Photoshop. Uh, so if you look here, so the black and white help me see a little better. There's a little leaf here, right? I can't really see it as well in, in, in this photo. I guess it's right here. There we go. Right there's the leaf there. So I'm just going to just add a leaf that looks similar to that. Right, there was like a little thing. Now I'm a I'm an illustrator, so I can freeform draw. Um, you know, you could add another petal over over here if you wanted to. Um, you know, it it's uh, you know it, I'm not going for super realistic necessarily. Um, when it comes to these, um, and and I'll, I'll, if I if I leave this um, as I draw on this, if I'm going to leave the background white, now I've kind of ruined that. Uh, you know, I can't really erase this off. I might be able to get it off. So in this case, now I've kind of either committed to that, or I'm going to have to um, do a light background on there, and 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 maybe I'll add a light background on on that now that I've. I've done that, or I could start over again. Same here. So I, you really do need to have this pre-planned. Um, I might be able, yeah, I can get that one off scratching it. I think this one's a little too dark, but I'm gonna take an, I could take an eraser and, and see. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to worry about that for now. Um, but yeah, so as I said, unplugged, I'm, this wasn't pre-planned. Uh, what I, what I usually do is so I teach and I make kits. So what I usually do is I, I will take my photo into Illustrator and I have a tablet that I draw onto. And so I can draw the, I can draw, um, add leaves and things to it, um, which is really handy, but I'm an illustrator. So I, I have all those, those tools. Okay, so next is choosing colors. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know, you know, we're looking at, you know, we're looking at a flower, right? 
I don't need this much wool for this flower, but right now I'm not sure what I what I want to use, right? So what I do is I go into my stash and I I actually keep my wool color in bags with of color, right? So I I know where my purples are, I know where my pinks are, my greens, they're all like in, in bins um, and in bags. Um, I also have a little swatch. Um, it, it actually is a little folder. It's like, it's meant for um, uh, trading cards, actually. Um, and you could get them, sometimes you can get them in the dollar store. I, I wound up having to order mine online, but they're basically, like trading card um, holders, and so each one I put a little stuff of the color in, and I and I and I label it, and and so if I if I wasn't sure, like if I had my colors all over the place, or I needed to order some from a specific company, um, right, then I would know what the names were. So I'm going to start with these uh, again. I have way more. I, I'm not going to need this much. I just kind of pulled pulled the piece out. Um, and so, uh, in right here, um, these are the colors that I, I picked based on a photo I took of these colors. So I'm going to take all these off my pad now <laughs> and I, I'm on a table where I can lay them out. Typically I actually just have them lying on the floor <laughs> uh, of my studio office. And, and then I can see uh, more what, what I have. Okay. That's, that's a Brown. I have a very dark Brown that almost looks, looks black. And again, I don't know if I need all of these colors. I just pulled them out. Um, just so I can have a better idea. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to see about getting this down. A little bit more okay there we go center that okay so here is my drawing now that you saw that's gonna bug me by the way I think I could get that off it's not a big deal okay so first I tend to use batting when I felt so for my initial uh, color, um, I pulled these like mauve colors out, but I also pulled out a little bit of a, a purple. I, I'm going to maybe mix this in a little bit with the mauve just to add a little more purple. Um, if you look at Echinacea or Cornflower, is what it's also called. I've I've seen a couple different colors, and here's some examples. There's like a red one. I've seen white, um, you know, and I've seen different shades of the purple. Um, so it's, it's not always pink. Like I wouldn't make it pink like this. Um, I would tend to say that this would be the colors that I would pull out and maybe blend. So if what I'm going to do is start off by just adding some of these petals onto um, my painting. Um, and I did bring out a little bit of, of roving. Um, so with the batting that I have, I, I use Maori batting. Uh, I do have a little bit, this is a, from a Dorset sheep and they heathered it. Um, Heathering means that they've, at the mill, when they were carting the fibers and putting it into a chunky rope, um, they blended different colors, and it gives it a, a more realistic look. Um, but it might be too chunky. Uh, I haven't played with it. So I bring that out just in case. Um, and so this is roving, comes on a rope, but it's quite, quite long fibers and I find that these long fibers can be a bit a bit difficult to uh here I'll hold it over here to the side um, you really need to shorten them um, I do have a pair of scissors in case I decide I wanted to to blend it 
in, see it's a little bit lighter than, than this, and maybe this will work better for what I want to do. I don't know yet, but it, I have options. Like I have, I have options. Um, and so, as I said, like I have a wide variety of colors because I teach and I like to have all these colors on hand. And so when I'm doing this process, if I'm going to do this for a workshop or a kit, I would, what I do is then I have all these colors and then I use them. And then I guess about the amount that I used. And I usually give a bit more uh, because maybe you're going to make it a little bit different than me, right? Maybe you want to have a slightly different color than me. Um, so I'm going to start by pulling a piece of my, um, a piece of this more lavender color. Um, and I just want to fill in one of the petals. And what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to, they're going to be going into points, um, I just like to take my piece of batting and I just grab the bottom and I just give it a little twist like that. Um, and then I tack that in to the piece. Now it may be a little thick and I'm not tacking it in a lot because I, I'm trying to decide like, is this the color that I want? I feel like that this echinacea needs to be, have a little more of a, of a pink color into it or even maybe a little more of this. So then I can just pull that up and because I didn't tack it in that much and I could take a, a little bit of this mauve color and I'm just going to finger card and see. Now, if I took even amounts, so if I said, okay, I'm taking 50-50 of these colors, then I know if I want to do a larger amount Right, because if I'm going to do all these petals and I found a color combo I like, I'd want to card a bit more of it than just this little amount of finger carding, right? So it's like painting where you're measuring and going, okay, I need like 50 of this and 50 of that. Um, so a lot of a lot of times, um, if you don't have all of, like a wide variety of colors, uh, this is a good way of getting that that variety. And so again, I'm just going to give a little twist. And I take a needle and I'm just going to start tacking it on. Um, I didn't blend it all the way, so you'll be able to see um, maybe the, the varying colors on there, which is can be nice. Now, if I wanted to lighten it up, I did bring this pink, so I could take a pink and I could take some of what I've already made. Like maybe I need to lighten up the color a little bit. And so I can then blend that pink in and, and, and maybe I like that color and I, I just want to add a bit of pink on top. So I blended the pink to see what I get. And I always compare it to the, the actual photo that I, that I took. Now I know this is something more simple you know, you really can get advanced if you're doing like a photo of something complex. But if this is your first time or you're very new to needle felting, I, I would say that I would just go with something simple like a flower or, you know, even just like a simple landscape. Um, okay, so again, watch the Needle Felt 101 Basics of Needle Felt Painting if you want to know more about the needles I use. I always use a... 38 star and a 38 spiral. That's just my go-to. I sometimes will have a 40 triangle on hand. Um, I don't typically go any higher than that number. Um, that's why I use a, a star because a star is going to felt a bit differently than a triangle. I find that the 36 triangle, which is a standard needle, is a little, um, because I'm using 100% wool fibers, uh, in my sheet, it, it's 100% wool. I find that the um, holes that you punch through, see, you could see it coming through the other other side. I find that um, it doesn't work as nice. Like this, I feel like gets a really good. It really gets the wool to stick into the felt sheet, and um, and 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 you know, and it, I'm not sitting there, and it feels like it's like me really pushing it in, in there. Um, I have 
the um, spiral tool, I use this more when I'm, I call it side stabbing, right? So if I'm going to be connecting the fibers, like it, it's almost side, right? I'm, I'm coming down on an angle, but I don't do that at this, at this stage. I also want to say that I'm using a foam pad for this. My foam pad, this one, um, has been well used. It's in my um, discard pile, um, and I'll pull it out once in a while when I'm doing something like making nests, or like I like I said, I'm working on on the, you know, the, the painting. I don't need to worry about all the little pieces coming out, but it does sink in more because it's not it's not very firm right it's firmer on on the edges like it's firmer here so let's let's do a little experiment yes i know i'm over i know i'm over in the corner but i'm going to attack down this petal and let's see how initially how it comes through uh, and if you're noticing what i tend to do is if i take the wool and I just roll it in my hand like that I leave it loose around the edges and then I can stab it into place so it, I that way I have more control over where that color goes when I do the petals I don't usually do one that's that's a half a petal um, I would have to make make more of my my wool mix uh, in order to Right, because I blended colors there. Uh, um, if you're not a, if you don't want to to blend wool colors, I would say is I just pick a color. Like so, if if the purple is what you want, right? If you want to use that lavender, right? You, I would just lay that down. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it up off my pad, and you can see how on the firmer spot it didn't go as through as much as it did in the softer parts of my foam pad. So the benefit of this is that it's connecting in there. The The downfall of it, like the, the con side of that is that um, it might start to stick or it, it'll might start to really sink in when you're stabbing. So I would say that if you have a, a new pad um, or if you have been felting a lot and you have an old pad, um, then you could um, give it a try, give it an experiment and, and, and see. Right, so yeah, so you could just uh, lay down just one color, right? So maybe you do want it to be more purpley, more that lavender. You could just use that and tack that down. And then if I wanted to, I could take a little strip of another color. If I want to add like a line to it, I could just, I just roll a, a piece in my hand like this, and then I'll just like add a little, add a little line if I want that. Um, I could use that as like an outline. Um, I did bring a slightly darker of Right, it, it, it's like a dark version of that color. Oh man, I'm, I'm getting stuff mixed all over the place here now. Okay. Um, and maybe I wanna use this, I could use this as an outline. Roving makes a really nice, a really nice, um, I call it wool thread. So I take it and I roll it in my hand like this, right? So what I'm, I might want to start outlining um, as I'm working a lot of times I'll do this later, like if I feel like it really needed to, uh, I'm not seeing like where the petals are and maybe it needs a bit of a line on there, right? And that's when I, you could do, you could do that, right? You could add a little highlight line as well. Um, I could use a pink that seems a bit bright, right? So see how bright the pink, pink is, um, or here's the roving. So I can pull off, see I just pulled off a bunch of strands of the, of the roving. 
And now I'm just gonna roll that in to my hand to create that wool thread. As I said, this is just me guessing like what I might want to do um, for, for timing of the video, since this is an, an actual lesson, this is just me walking you through some of my process. Um, I'm not really going to go into like full, this is how I make this. This is more of a, a, how do I get started? How do I choose like colors and, and things like that? Now I have way too much. I don't need all that. So I can pull some of that off. Um, I noticed it was started. It's starting to um, loosen up. If you lick your hand or you blow on your hand, and I roll in one direction. I'm going to get a tighter uh, roll on this thread, and then I can. Maybe get a better. A better outline there, and then because this is roving, I'm going to pinch it here, and I'm. Really, all right. It, it, roving, you have to pull it further apart from itself, but um, like when you're pulling the fibers because they're so long, you have to actually pull them far away. Whereas if I pull on batting, like if I start pulling on this, it's gonna pull apart very close because they're short fibers. So again, I don't usually go into detailing like that until like, Later, I usually just add all of my petals on at the same time. Uh, I add them first, right? So I'm just going to get some color down on here. Okay, so I'm going to add some color to this. Uh, and so if you get little bits stuck in there, I'm just going to take that out. I usually have tweezers with me. Um, today I don't, um, I didn't bring any, I'm, I'm not too worried. I'm, I'm tacking this down and I might not tack it down super firm. Just get it in there. I am following my outline. Um, when I'm working, I can also see how I'm folding up my felt sheet. This is helping me create that groove so I know where my petals um, start and end. And, and, I, and as I said, sometimes I will add, like I, I'm a graphic designer by, by trade. That was what I trained uh, in school. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull that out in this as well. We don't, we don't need that in there right now. So see how when I'm pulling on it, I am holding my finger to keep it from pulling all the way off because I have not tacked this in all the way yet. So just wanna make sure I don't pull up everything I just did because that wasn't my intention. So I'm gonna give this a few more tacks. Okay, so once I would complete adding the petals on, um, then I would work on the middle part here. So showing you the picture again, you can see that um, there's all these individual, um, like, just like very tiny little spiky uh, bits in the middle of the flower. Uh, yeah, I, I love flowers. I love taking pictures of flowers and I don't know what that's called. Um, but anyway, I don't have the patience to make every single individual little um, piece. So I have pulled, I've pulled out these, these, these colors. These are the colors that I have chosen. There's quite a bright piece um, of, of like an orangey red color. Uh, and, and so what I'll do is I'm going to lay this down um, as the, for the entire piece. I brought these colors out. This is a dark brown. This is probably too dark for uh, my painting. Um, so I may blend that with some of the brown if I find that it. I want something slightly darker, right? So I would just, like I showed you earlier, I would just pull some of the darker and, and the lighter.
No, I'm I, I can add my petals on later. I just wanted to start showing you my process. Uh, I probably put too much too much down. Um, if you want, all right. So if you want a sharp edge, I'm going to go with less wool. I always say to my students, less wool, less wool. I'm going to hold this upside down. I'm right-handed, um, so it's easier for me to do what I'm going to show you this way. So I can sit there and I can try to get all these loose ends in, or I'm going to just do where I'm going to go along where my drawing edge is here and I'm gonna stab around that, but I'm gonna make sure that I left, actually I should probably leave a little more than that. There we go. And I'm picking it up and I can see like where, like if I'm getting it in there and, and, and I can tidy that up a little bit later. So what I'm doing is I'm stabbing along my line that I drew. And I would highly recommend, you know, I would do the petals first and then I would do this part. So now I'm just going to tack this down, this the one side. See, I still have the flap side, so I'm just leaving it alone. And then I'm going to fold it over, and then I'm going to um, see how I fold it over, but I'm not pulling it because I won't. I don't want to see. I don't want to see uh, light edit here. I'll, I'll I'll zoom in a little bit more here. Okay. I'll pull this in like this, right? I don't want to see like white edges. So for me, I will push the wool and tack it down to make sure I fill in that space. And then I'm just tacking it up and along here. Again, as I said, I would have the petals in there because I didn't add them in. I'm not really going to stamp this down too much right here. I just wanted you to see what I I do for that. Then I can flip it around like this and then and then create the cone shape on top, right? So I think I like this color. This color works well with with the colors that I um that I see on that on the on the painting. Um but I also want to add some of this brown I don't want to make every little spike. People can. I, I just don't really have the time. I don't really want to. <laughs> so I am just took some of the brown and I'm putting a bit more here and I'm just going to just randomly tack it around to give it a bit of a, a shading uh, look to it. Um, you could probably get away with just doing doing a little bit. And, and maybe it's a little darker right here. Now what I can do is I can take a little bit of the my the color that I chose, the orangey red, and I could create a couple spikes just just where this is. This is where I would be playing around with it because maybe the spikes have to go down into that piece. And I would make sure that like I'm doing similar to what I did to the petals where I'm just taking a small bit and I'm just rolling it in my fingers, leaving one end looser and then just tacking it in. This may be a very failed experiment. <laughs> uh, I would also um, do the same thing you did at the, the base to, to, the, to the top where I'm going to add... I'm going to add that around the edge, right? So see how I left it loose and then fold that over. And I could also stab that, these loose fibers. Once I tack them down around the top, I could tack those loose fibers and see if I get them into the, the darker piece just to um, get them to connect in and give it a little bit of a spiky look. I could leave this a bit spiky up here if I wanted to um and maybe that would work and and I could also do I have a little bit of a darker of this color so like they're very similar but one is a little bit more dark a little more red and a little bit darker 
Uh, my camera, you might not see it on the camera, um, but hopefully in the photo you can see the difference between the two. And I could create like little little lines and I could add that in. And again, this is experimental. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. And, and if I'm not really uh, seeing much in here, like I want like just little little thin lines. Um, if that's not working, I can just take a thin piece and lay that back over and maybe that'll fix it up. Oh, and what you could do as well is if you wanted something a little bit darker to um, blend in, I would take maybe a little, little bit of brown. And then that, actually, I probably would use the, the slightly darker red because it's already, it's very similar, sorry, orangey, rusty red color. Um, and maybe add a little bit, oh, I got a little bit right here, a little bit of my, it's actually called Fox in Maori, or at least who I buy it from, the, 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 this orange here. So I'm just blending in a bit, and, and I can lay thin pieces of this down. I, in fact, it didn't get too dark. It got darker, but it didn't get very dark, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm not even going to use that dark, dark brown. I think this is dark enough. I don't think I need that dark brown. So now I've set it aside, and now I'll remember that I'm not going to use that um, if I do this. Like right, if I if I were to going to be if I was going to be teaching this as a class, uh, I would not be using that. So here I've created a slightly darker that maybe will help me get that um, look, but without uh, being over getting too dark or anything like that. And and, and I'm just random stabbing it in here. And I can always come back in and add a bit more of my original orangey rusty color. Um, and so because of my pad having that divot in the center, if I want, and I'm, if I'm having issues, I'm tacking this in, right? I can come over to a side that's not super soft. Um, and for now, I'm going to leave this alone because then I would want to be working on the petals again. So maybe now I want to, like like I said, I would have added the petals on. I don't want to make this a super long video, right? But I'll show you. I can come back in now and I can start adding more um, petal. Um, if you want to have a, like I know I said leave it loose and you can stab it in. If you were already knowing the size of your petal and you had your piece knowing the size of it, um, you could just gently roll it. I had the blow on my hand. I could just gently roll it like this and it'll create a, it'll move those fibers in and, and right. So now I have like a sharper edge to start with. And then I can just lay this down and still loose, but I've, already created an edge that I can just keep working with right when I tack it tack it on so if you're going to be adding um so you're going to add color or something to this right then I'm just going to tack like it I see how I got sorry what I mean I meant if you're going to add a background color oh yeah don't forget to tug once in a while um what will happen is all the stabbing will start to um pull these to pull the edges of your painting in. So I always give it pulls on all directions so that it, it stays a bit looser. If you're, if you're, if this starts to warp it, you know, it's not the end of the world. You'll, you'll most likely frame this. So, um, so what I tend to do is I take the loose fibers and I start to tack them, um, in and under my shape. Can you see how I didn't go all the way up because I didn't, um, right. I didn't, I, yeah, I wasn't sure how far down I was going to go, even with the outline. So I'm going to have to um, create more wool and tuck that in. So if you've blended colors, it's good to overlap where you're going to, right? So when I was adding the petals on, I'll just pull this out. When I was adding the petals on, I should over make sure I always overlapped onto where that middle part was going to go, right? 
Okay. All right. And so now um, I wouldn't be working on it like this, but I just want to show you is that now what I'm going to do is either I'll gently just pick at that bottom or I will just stab under, right? So I'm stabbing into and under that piece. And honestly, like that piece, you know, isn't like a set line, right? So, so if it's a little bit, if it gets a little lumpy under there and you don't mind it, then you could, you could leave that, leave that alone. So that's how I would, you could tuck it in and you could always add a little bit more, say you're like, okay, well, I think I need a little more of this dark brown here. You could then go and just fill that in if you wanted to. Right. So I think I'm happy. I, I, I'm not going to use this at all. So that gets put in the discard pile. Um, I, I didn't need to use the roving. So that goes in the discard pile. And uh, based on what I used to create the petals and stuff, um, I used a little bit of this color, right? I, I you this was a kind of a primary color. I used um, these two are very close. So I did use a little bit of a slightly darker of that color and a little bit of pink, right? So that would be what I would um, be concentrating on moving forward for for the petals. Then I won't get confused. I know that those are what I have. I didn't wind up using this color. I had this color set out to use with the cornflower. I'm uh, sorry, with this middle part here. If I uh, felt like that this color was a little too vibrant, I could maybe blend it to make it a bit more brown with this color. Let's see what happens when I do that. Um, right, And this is your decision making. Um, if if you, you know, wanted to see, I would say if you've got different colors, I would give that a test run and, and, and see. I did put a little more of that, uh, it's called spice, um, in the wool that I buy. Um, I don't, I think from the main warehouse, they might have slightly different names, um, but that's from whom I buy, that's what they call it, but it is Maori wool. All right. And so maybe, maybe I prefer it to be a little less vibrant. So by just blending a bit of the spice color in there, right, I've created this brand new color that's a light version of, of, of this color, right? And so I could test that and see if I like that more. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just want a little bit of that just here along the top to create a, a very gentle highlight, you know, maybe, maybe I don't like it at all. Maybe I want to remove that. Right. So, um, again, as I'm working, I'm always thinking of things like that. Like if it's for me personally, I can use a hundred different colors, right? Like, because I'm not worrying about kits and supply chain issues and, and things like that. Right. But if, um, if I'm going to teach it, I don't, I already give enough colors. I don't want it to get any more confusing. So, um, I do really have to think about that, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm working on, on the paintings and stuff. Okay. So I'm going to set aside my purples colors for now. So I'm putting them over here. Okay. So now I've got all these little bits of color everywhere now. This is what happens all the time, right? Um, and as I said, like, um, I would, I would most likely look for some roving that I have to outline these once I'm done. Um, now, now that I'm seeing it, um, now that I'm seeing it here and I feel like I need to, um, I feel, I feel like I need to, um, oops, sorry. I'm just... My camera got a little off kilter. I knocked it. Um, I, 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 
I feel like no matter how much work I'm going to do here, even if I do this, which you can start to see like a natural groove in there, I think I'm going to, you know, I, I think I'll be happier for my painting if I um, add maybe a slight little outline around it. It will also tidy up any of my, um, if I've got any loose edging in there. In other words, like it, I, I don't like how it, it looks, say, on the outside, and, and I didn't tack this one down very well either. So you can see now where I added a bit of a div of, of a divot. The, this is still pretty loose, like I can still feel it's loose, but but I'm happy with the direction it's going in. I, I really like this part here. So you can see how when I added the different colors in there, um, it started to give it that idea of that spiky, but like not overwhelming. Um, you could spend, I would say, based on the amount of what I'm seeing there, if you were to try to recreate that exactly, you're probably looking at a like two to three hour time frame on that. Um, my, my, my best guesstimate, you know, I would say a minimum of two hours, but, but maybe you're faster than me, um, right? And so you can see how it's coming through the other side, um, and and as I said, like maybe you have different colors, maybe you will work on on something um, a little bit different. Um, maybe you're working with a different color corn flower. Okay, so the last thing that I think about on this is um, the greens, the the green part of this, right? So doing the stem and the leaves. Now, I tend to use. Um, this green a lot is called, again, um, my supplier of Maori uh, is called grass. Um, this is apple, right? This is called pine. Um, and this is either dark green or fur. I, I, I didn't take a look, right? And then I have like a um, muted green, um, like a marshy meadow. I think it might be meadow marsh. <laughs> I never remember the names. There's three. There's meadow, marsh, and uh, uh, let's see, meadow, marsh, and whew, see, I can never remember. That's why I have swatches. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm gonna need this color again. Like we're just doing a stem and leaves. If I were to do um, uh, green in the background, like say I was gonna do green and blue because I wanted to do some sky or maybe I just want all green, I would use something lighter than what I'm going to put here. But because I'm not worrying about that right now, um, I'm going to use this green um, to start. So what I'd be happening is this right now, my plan, so this is my plan, is that this green is going to be my base green. This is going to be my highlight green. And this is going to be uh, my shading. Now, this might not be dark enough. So... I can blend it with this. Why did I pull this out? I use this wool to help create a bit of a texture. So I'm not sure if I want to do that or not, right? And I mean, texture is like maybe adds a little bit of just a slightly different green, say in this leaf or, you know, maybe that leaf, right? So that's why I have these colors out. Like that's why I have a variety. I could have more, uh, but when I do the stems and stuff, I just stick with um, just a few colors, a few five. I just stick with a few five colors. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm pulling a piece off my batting, and I'm going to uh, gonna roll it in my hand to create that tube. So... This is probably going to be too thick. It's definitely too tall. Like, so it might be too thick, but I'll roll it anyway. So it's not very, th it gets thin. I just don't want it to be like super thick. Like if, if you saw that this is, this got pretty poofy, um, because I added all the colors on it, but, um, that just means I probably won't get it under glass. Um, so I'm just going to take my hand. I'm going to roll the, I had the blow on my hands. So I'm just rolling this gently um, because I have to tuck it into that petal. And because I'm not finished yet, right, I could always, I can go in and, and, and add a little bit more to that petal 
um, cause it is a little thin, um, if, if anything got muddled up, right. But this way I can tuck these loose fibers up under that piece. Right. And this is definitely, it's a bit too, too thick. So at this point, even though I rolled it, I'm just going to pull some off the side and then roll this. And I'm only rolling this because I want to have a sh that, that sh sharper edge. So when I lay it down, I already have a sharper edge that when I'm tacking it in, I'll just tack it in the center. So I'm tacking it, I'm tacking it down. And then see how I'm up here now I'm going to be tacking this. I probably don't need this much. I'm going to pull some of that off. And so see how I'm coming down the edge? And that's helping me connect those. Right, I'm going along the edge, so what I'm doing is, remember I was talking about tacking in to and under the piece, right, of my flower. There's a little, little bit that came out of there. Right, so now what I'm doing, I'm call it sweep and tuck, so I'm going along the edge. Right? And then I'll tack it down the center. Um, again, where I would come in with this needle is if I'm having trouble really getting that um, in there, like, see here, there's like a piece hanging out. So this might help me connect the fibers a bit differently. I, I tend to use my my spiral needle, uh, my 38 spiral, uh, when I'm working more along these edges. It can be a bit aggressive. It might push the wool in a little too far. So you always have to think about um, if you start doing it and it's starting to move things around too much, um, right while you're while you're stabbing, um, I would then move back to your more coarse needle. Right? So there, I added the stem on there, and I can work a bit more on this this petal. I want it to look like it's overlapping. So as I said, I can always go in and I can always add a bit more on top of that. You know, d depends on 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 how it looks for me. Um, right, and I might keep working like on. Sorry, things keep moving around here um, on that, right? And then I would add a leaf on here. And again, you could, I don't, I don't like to go super thick. Like this got a little even thicker than I wanted, but it's okay because I can work with it. Um, as for the leaf, I would say uh, I would do that twisting, maybe a gentle, just a gentle uh, rub between the hands just to, um, get a few of those loose fibers in, but I'm going to just tack this on and try to follow my outline. But again, it's not, unless, unless you're trying to get perfect with the leaf, like if you think you're going to have a flower expert, a botanist in your house, <laughs> um, I wouldn't worry too much about it being exact to what you, you drew. But if you want it to be exact to what you drew, just always pick up and see um, so if I wanted there to be a bit more texturing in there, I could do, I could just take a thin piece of like some wool that, I, right, like I took that like grayish marshy wool or, or meadow or whatever it's called, right, and do that. I could blend it in advance. Um, maybe I don't want that at, at all, right, because I can take some of this um, pine color, which is slightly lighter. And then I could say, okay, my light source is coming from above. Maybe it's coming from over here. So I want to add a little of a darker color over on this side. So as I tack it on, I'm seeing like, does it look like it's darker than the other color? Do I need to blend that with the darker green? And I'm not going to need to, um, I, I think it's going to work out that work out fine. If you want to have a stem in the center here, uh, right, you could just tack in a line. Um, if 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 you're doing a a a, a, a really hard um, shadow there, 
um, the my grass buried my grass green, or my apple, sorry, my apple green. See how bright the apple green is? The apple green might be too bright. So this is, I'm just gonna do a light little, I'll, I'll tack on the apple. So then I'm gonna put this highlight on, and if I think, well, that highlight's really bright, then I could take a little bit of the grass green and the apple green and blend them and see if I can get something that maybe isn't quite, quite so bright. And and maybe I want it really bright on here because maybe the sun's shining on that, but not so much here. So this is another way to tone down the apple green. And, and if I tack it on and it still looks pretty bright, then I would then pull it up and then blend some more with some um, green. Right, some of the uh, the lighter green. Sorry, the grass and the apple together. Right, and again, I could... If it's thick enough, once you get it established, you could create a petal, or sorry, that center of your leaf, like this, the, the vein there, right? And create your own divot. Now, sometimes I tend to often have my seven needle clover punch tool, and that'll help stamp down some of what I put on there and help connect the fibers in. I will warn you with that particular uh, doing that, uh, it might smoosh things and, and, and move things around. So you wanna make sure that what you have on there is tacked in so that you don't, um, so it's not moving around everywhere. So that is how I get started with a painting, how I decide the colors and things. So I hope that you found this video helpful uh, when you get started doing your own needle felt painting from a, from a photograph, um, you know, and, and, and certainly I do really love sharing how I go through my, my process. Uh, you know, when I'm creating something from scratch, you know, that's a whole different process. Um, but it's all the same at the end of the day. It's the same thing, you know, what colors am I going to use and what colors am I going to blend? Um, and as I said, a lot of times uh, when I create, uh, you do a, a, a painting, I often think like if I were to teach this, you know, how simple could I make this um, subject matter? Uh, you know, if I do something very complex, then that's a whole different process. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email. You can contact me um, through various ways. So you can find out how to in the description part of the video um, or on the last frame of the video. Um, and uh, certainly if you uh, have any ideas that you want to share uh, or things you'd like to see, uh, definitely connect with me. Um, so thank you again for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.